Hi, I'm Teresa with Inflectra. I'll be providing a series of short videos to help you get started using Spira. This includes all the additions of the system, Spira Test, Spira Team, and Spira Plan. In this video, we'll take a look at test execution and defect logging. So let's get started. Spira offers several ways to begin test execution. You may use the Tools option on the top of Test Case and Test Set List pages here. You may also right click on a test case and use the execute option there. Or you may use the execute button at the top of test case and test set detail pages here. For this video, we'll be using the my page option. Once test cases and test sets are assigned, the owner can find the assignment on their my page. There are two widgets to take a look at, my assigned test sets and my assigned test cases. Here you can see that I have one test set assigned and that there are four test cases in that set. To begin execution, I'll simply press the play button. The play button opens the test wizard. Here you see the release value has been predefined in the test set, otherwise you would be able to specify it here. If Spire is connected to a CI server, then you'll be able to specify a build here as well. On the main test execution page, you have options for different views. In the split view here, we have a table with a list of test cases and the steps on the left, and the inspector area for testers to enter results here on the right. The table view lists the table and inspector areas in one large scrollable table, similar to Excel. The mini view is a scalable view for tablets and phones, and the iframe option lets you embed a web application. So you can do your testing in the web app here and records your results at the left. You can see the testing status options here, pass, blocked, caution, fail, not applicable. The default settings includes all these statuses and requires that you input an actual result for status fail. You can change those default settings at any time here in the testing se settings option of the product admin menu. As we begin to record results, you can see them displayed in the progress bar at the top. There's also a leave button, so if you need to leave the test run, it will be placed in my pending test runs widget, allowing you to resume the test at a later time. So let's get to testing. Let's say we pass all the steps of the first test case, and now we're testing the ability to edit users, and we need to click on that user list page. But for some reason, we're getting a 404 error there. We'll click on our actual result. We'll enter what we're seeing. We can take a screenshot of that 404 error and paste it right in the actual result. And now we'll click on the Incident tab. The Incident set tab will show any other incidents that have been logged against this step. That way you can link to an existing incident instead of having to create a duplicate. But this is a brand new one, so we'll go ahead and give that a name. And we'll say that the type is a type bug. And now we can click on the Fail button. Spyro will log the incident and fail the step. And we can move on to the next test case. Here we see the ability to delete users relies on that same user list page. So we'll enter that actual result. Give a screenshot and click on our incident tab. And now we can just link to the previous incident we logged. hit the fail button, and move to our last test case. Here we can use the pass all option. Now the finish button appears. Clicking the finish button finalizes the test run, so no more changes can be made. I'll be returned to the My page, which is where I began my test execution. You can see now I have the incident that I logged in my detected incidents widget. And now we can take a look at the test results. 
First, we can open up our test case list page. Here you can see those results, the two failures and the two past test cases. You can also see that reflected in the chart here on the left. If we open up our test set, you can see the rollup of the data there, two past test cases and two fails. And clicking on the link, we can see that same result here. To access the test run, we can click this failed hyperlink there, or we can select the test runs tab and click the test run link there. The test run shows exactly the step that was failed. To expand the actual result, you can click here, and you can click a link to view the incident. You may also see all the incidents logged against the run with the incident tab. This would come in handy if it was a particularly long test case and multiple incidents were logged. If we click on the link for the incident, you can see that the description in includes the description expected result as well as the actual result recorded during the test. So the incident is now ready for triage. Thanks so much for watching the Spire test execution video today. We have more Spire Explainer videos for you to explore on this channel. Check them out now.